is Moses. A man born under sentence of death. Every son that is born shall be cast into the river. But who lived to be raised as a prince in the magnificent court of the most powerful empire the world has ever seen. Then he saw the sufferings of a people, a people deprived, brutalized, enslaved, and he chose to put off his princely garments and become one of them. Your name? I'm an Israelite. He suffered long and bitterly. I'm sick of you! Before his people and the enemies of his people saw in his eyes the light of God's will and heard in his voice the thunder of God's utterance. He had to fight against the weakness of man and the wickedness of man before he found himself free to change the whole course of our history. We must start again. But above all, he taught men that they were free. We are free even to choose to enter into a covenant with him. This is Moses, a man like us with our weaknesses and doubts, but also with our hopes. I would like to cross the river. Moses, who spoke to God in the high places. Israelites dwelt in the land of Canaan, but drought and famine ravaged the land and they went into Egypt. They prospered and the Israelite Joseph was a prince of the land. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Is that Joseph? It could be Joseph. Is he a god? He could be a god. The Egyptians had many gods. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Their men are bursting with seed. Their women are round like fruit. Their encampments are loud with the bleating of children. They multiply. They multiply. Your grace has some immediate danger in mind? War. Should there be war with some alien people, might not these aliens in our midst join with our enemies? Let us defend ourselves before we are attacked. Your Divine Majesty's immediate orders? I specify nothing. I say, deal wisely with them. Use immediate wisdom. Are you of the tribe of Levi? Yes, we are.
sons of the men of the sand. The name diminishes them, but they are not diminished. Continue. Majesty, they came out of the land of Canaan, driven by plague and famine. In Egypt, they sought grain and pasture and found them both. They grow fat and multiply and are become an immense multitude. In order that they may not, in the event of war, unite with our enemies without. So is it written. So shall our posterity read it. But the sentence is not yet complete. Let me hear wisdom. This present mode of oppression is clearly inefficacious. As I see it, the tribes of Israel, mingled together as they are, lose each its special code of law and restraint. Constrained from above, they are grown loose beneath. Adultery, lechery, incest, the zest for breeding. It is the mark of a slave race, animality. They couple like the dogs of the desert. And we, we glory in stability, changelessness, power. Along comes the God of death and says, Behold, I am all these things. But the sentence remains unfinished. Let the sentence now be pronounced. Every son that is born shall be cast into the river, but every daughter shall be saved alive. Search all the houses! Forgive me, forgive me, my love. Someone may hear. I trust no one. My love, my dear love. There's a stable near here. You'll be safe. No one will know, no one will see. Come. Be brave. He must live. We are safe here. The child was kept hidden from the cruelty of the soldiers of the pharaoh, but could not be kept hidden for long. When does she come back, your mother? She still has the fever. She sends love and greetings, but begs no one to come near her. The fever is catching. Now Miriam, the child's sister, had a plan of her own devising, whereby the baby might be saved from the hands of the soldiers of the pharaoh.
Now the pharaoh had a daughter, the princess Bithnish, and she was barren. And she would come down to the Nile to pray to the gods of increase that she might become a mother and so be blessed. again. Where does he come from? He's well fed. Have you seen all those rings of fat? Why is he here? Who is his mother? The Nile is his father, anyway. you in here? Call the guards. Wait. Come here, girl. Do you know this child? I am an Israelite. I know no men children. The Egyptians kill them at birth. How do you know this child is a boy? Do you know his mother? 
I know many mothers who weep for their sons and whose breasts are heavy with milk. You can find me a nurse among the women of the Israelites. Yes, one who weeps. Bring her for my son. For he is my son. And his father is the Nile. His name shall be Moses, meaning my son. Meaning in our language, I brought him forth. I am sorry that your little boy died. Was killed? We mothers cannot easily understand high state policy. We are the givers of life, daughters of the sun. Men turn their backs on the sun to build labyrinths away from the light. The labyrinths breed strange monsters. These become the gods of darkness. Men love their dark gods. We'll come back here in four hours. You will be paid, of course. Each time you feed the child, you receive one of these. Hey! What is so special about her son? I should have I don't see why he should be saved. None of ours. She sold her child to the Egyptians for money. Perhaps... Perhaps what? That old god of Abraham is waking up after his long sleep. You mean... Perhaps the child has been saved, not for his parents, but for us. Uh. <coughs> oh. What name have they given him? Moses. Moses. When he is done with your breast, he shall be wholly mine. You will forget him. Forget him completely. Forever. Moses was raised in the court of the Pharaoh and learned the arts and the skills of a true prince of Egypt. That you may speak and eat. Your eyes I open in the God's name, that light and sight may bless them. You will raise your eyes to light eternal. Open your mouth in speech that is soundless, since it is the soul speech. my mother, out of your goodness. You leave me motherless, the mother still yet to find. Farewell. Who 
is it? Moses. My lord. It is Highness you must call me, cousin. Your Highness. I have been searching for you all day and everywhere. That is not right. My apologies, Your Highness. You promised to take me crocodile hunting. Ah, yes. But I reconsidered. What would have happened to me if the crocodiles had snapped and eaten you? And what would have happened to the throne of Egypt? You would have taken it. Cousin, I am angry with you. No, do not be angry. Not now. I have come to tell you sad news. His Highness is not to be given sad news. That is laid down. My mother is dead. Your father's sister. Dead? Like the 3,000 men who built the great city and the treasure city? Yes. There is only one way of being dead. You have forgotten, Prince Manefta, the thing for which your cousin was sent here. Ah, oh, yes. You are to go and see the workers, to see that they are building right. I asked my father, you see, as a punishment. A punishment? Yes. You wouldn't take me crocodile hunting. too ill to work? He's not too ill for work if he's still working. What is this? It is, as you might say, a form of inducement to increase effort. Are you a scholar? I was a scholar when scholarship was allowed among the Israelites. Moses was drawn to this people, and he went to the city of Pithom that he might know of the sufferings of this people. You should not be here, should you, Dathan? It seems not. But I have certain rights. No rights, Dathan. Not even the right to report to my superiors officially? Not even that right. You will report when you're ordered to report. In the meantime, you have some duties to carry out. Duties to my own manhood. <laughs> Only free men can talk of manhood. What does the family unfree have to say? We have no straw to make bricks. Use some of your own. Man of straw. <coughs> An example, little Dathan. An example is required. Punishment, my lord, for inefficiency, for insolence, for insubordination. 
but not wanting to be a cuckold. <laughs> I said, I said, stop. Back to work, friends. This is none of your concern. I have things to remember, have I not? Bloody things. Wait! This is not to be spoken of. Do you understand? You killed him, and you will go away. You will say that I did it. They will all say that I did it. His heart stopped beating. But in any case, the responsibility is mine. I know is that he went in there and then I, I, I heard... There is a dead Egyptian in your midst. But you have no cause for fear. He was killed by his own brutality. I shall report this, but have no fear. Who are you, young man, who speak about Egyptian brutalities? My name is Moses. Moses? Moses. I have served well, my lord, and it is my ambition to serve better. I would not utter the dirty word payment, of course. You will be paid whatever your information is worth. Do not waste time. I'd thought of uh, some small promotion. Do not waste time. I have witnesses outside to testify to the murder of our overseer. A senseless murder, if I may say so. Go on. The Lord Moses was the slayer. He had authority to exert discipline. Go on. The Lord Moses has no such authority. He is an Israelite. He is the son of Amram and Jochebed of the tribe of, of Levi. When did you hear this? He was saved by his sister in the old time of the necessary execution of the children. Where did you hear this? Where did you hear it? I tell no lie. Moses, it has come true. Bring him. Is this the truth we've been waiting for? You call it the beginning. I tell you it's the end. It's the end for us. For 20 years, you've kept his name alive on our lips like a... like a promise of deliverance. And now, what is he, this deliverer? Hm. Just an Israelite who's killed an Egyptian. There's no promise of anything, except further servitude. The voice is the voice of a prophet, my son. But the words are a slave's words. I'm not wild-eyed like my sister here. I see things as they are. And when he walks into this house? He won't have time to walk into this house. He'll be running for his life. When he walks into the house of his parents, I shall be expected to have words. But. What words shall I have? I do not know. I loved the child I lost. And now I expect the pain of learning to love the child who is found and must once more be lost. So the boy brought Moses to his sister Miriam. For Moses was empty of all knowledge, both of his family and of his people. And Miriam had to fill that emptiness. You believe? I was told of a taking from the water. My mother, as I called her, hid nothing. That I was nourished by another's milk. But a girl from the Israelites, found me a nurse. I know that palace. I can describe the chamber and the garden, and the ins inscription that said he was to be born in the house of the king. 
Who? Who? He who was to come. The child of the sun, they called him. But to me, he was to be more than a child of the sun. Will you come home? I have found a mother. You have found a family. Can be rendered up to authority on pain of the execution of the capital sentence on any who may be hiding him or otherwise granting him comfort. shall be together again in the time of the setting free. We must pray so. If there is such a time. On any who may be hiding him or otherwise granting him comfort. And Moses came to Mount Horeb in the land of Sinai. Um... 
go. Back to no land. If you have no well, that is not our fault. This is our land, our water. For us and our sheep. Leave it. Back, back, back. Enough. Enough. I used to be a priest in the town of Midian, but I grew sick of stone idols. A man must Thank worship you. something great and simple. I am still looking. I am still looking for it. They say that on Mount Horeb, a man can see visions of the truth. I have seen no such visions. Perhaps I am too old. I'm certainly too old to climb it. Our story, Father. <laughs> yes, I wonder. It's very easily told. The people turned against me when I turned against idols. We are cut off. My daughters must get water from the well before the shepherds of Midian leave their beds. Otherwise, they will not be permitted to get water at all. But they come earlier and earlier. Depriving us of water has become a cruel sport. I am grateful for what you did. You've said that many times already. Gratitude is not a word. It is the desire to keep saying the word. <laughs> My daughters are forward in their speech, if not in their deeds. <laughs> How can one man prevail against so many women? <laughs> Are you traveling further, perhaps? For the moment, my story ends here. My journey has been one into exile. And exile is everywhere. For the exiled. Can you do shepherd's work? <laughs> I'd always been taught that work was for slaves. Egypt taught me many false things. You must put off that word exile. It's your people who know exile, not you. Yes. I must learn to think of them as my people. And during the years wherein Moses abode in the tents of Jethro, King Ramses of Egypt died. I knew him. I remember him with some tenderness. An elder cousin who was always promising to take me crocodile hunting. I do not believe he liked hunting. He would listen to bats and the cries of field mice. No one else could hear them. Only he. I cannot easily see him as a great vengeful lion striking men dead with a rod. There was a death majesty. Well, it was I who sent him to Pitham to trouble and this old accusation. Did I also send him to death in the desert? There is no certainty of his death. At least two caravans have brought news of a sort. What news? Of a hero who came to Midian out of Egypt, killed 20 men at a blow, married seven or eight sisters. The exact number is not clear. I would prefer him to be back with us. It would be good to see him smiling at my triumph. Let us have him in Egypt again.
It's nothing. The birds are singing. There's something else. Moses. My wife is called Zipporah. My son, Gesson. My wife's father, Jethro. The documents I hold are signed by the royal hand, sealed with the royal seal. They attest your right to return freely, to resume your former status and office. My status and office, you see. I am a shepherd. I am an Israelite. You are the Lord Moses, cousin to the Pharaoh. As such, your place and duty are self-evident. If I may say so, with respect. You are not come to force me back to Egypt. I have no such authority. I am but the bearer of a royal message. My compliments to the Pharaoh. I have my own kingdom. your shoes from your feet, for the place whereon you are standing is holy ground. Put off your shoes. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, and the God of Moses. I have surely seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt. I have heard their cry. I know their sorrows, and I have come down to deliver them and to bring them out of that land unto a good land, flowing with milk and honey. Now, therefore, behold, I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But, but, but who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. I will be with you. But if I say, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they shall say, what is his name? What shall I say to them? You shall say to the children of Israel what he is called. For what he is called is... I am that I am. And say too, the Lord God of your fathers has sent me unto you. Now the king of Egypt will not let you go, not by a mighty hand. 
But I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders. They will not believe me. They will say, the Lord has not appeared unto you. What is in your hand? A rod. Cast it to the ground. out your hand and take it by the tail. Now put your hand in your bosom. Now remove it. Return it to your bosom and again remove it. Through this power, they will believe. Oh, Lord, I, I'm not eloquent. I, not now, before. I am slow of speech. I am of a slow tongue. Who has made man's mouth? Who makes the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Am I not the Lord? But your brother Aaron shall be your spokesman, and you shall put the staff in his hand. But with you shall be the power of the Lord. judge in Israel. Let it be given to one of the wise, one of the strong. Do not place the burden on me. I refuse the burden. <laughs> flesh, a body will not miss.
that satisfy you, new god? of the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, of the God that you, Jethro, have long sought for, and for what it's worth, the blessing of Moses. still doubt. Well, what is there to believe in? Egypt is hard, slavery is hard, but at least they're reality. They're not empty hopes following some dream in the desert. You may be of his flesh, our flesh, but not of our spirit. I have no doubts. The people have forgotten him. I don't even remember his face no, myself. No, they haven't forgotten. They only remember him in a wrong way. A hero or a giant who could tame snakes, or strike men dead with a look. Here once, and may come again. But the again is a future so far off, it's almost the past. Past, future, just words. They exist only in the mind. I have to live in the present. Like a dog, waiting for the next handful of stale fish and cornbread. Aaron the dog. I'm a man, neither more nor less. Then be a man. The future is already here. Our brother is coming back. Go, oh, Iron. Over the river. Into the wasteland. You must meet him. Well, the whole thing is impossible. Where do I find the money? How did you manage it? If an Egyptian loses his purse, what do you do? Curtsy, give it back. And I shall have to bribe the overseer. I'll do that. Don't worry. <laughs> There's hope for you, Aaron. <laughs> Take me to the other side. Huh? No. I don't want any trouble over slaves. I can pay. Dream, you see. Dream. You're going to find somebody just because of a dream. Pain in silver, too. There was a time when dreams were considered important in Egypt. <laughs> that was Joseph. <laughs> the old days. This is modern times. Nobody follows dreams anymore. I follow this dream. I have to. Then you're mad. And the rest of the world is sane, huh? 
I'm mad because I dream of the coming of salvation, and they're sane because they like slavery. Is that it? Words, words, words. Who is this one you're going to meet? My brother, the messenger of the Lord. The messenger of the Lord? <laughs> The question of convincing everybody. Who is he? Who is he? Never heard of him. Show us a sign. Give us a sign. But what will you think of us? Your people. How can I make you understand us? Softened by bondage, degraded. Can you understand, brother? Freedom from decision. Freedom from action. A terrible word, freedom. But I must... must make you... must make you understand. I shall... shall make you understand. Brother! Brother! demand of him a sign something out of nothing show us a miracle nothing nothing show me a sign brother you don't know me. We never had any childhood together. We never rejoiced in our, our families, our children. Oh, now I can rejoice in your children. If I could just tell which is which. You're Leah. No, I'm Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> this is Leah. My husband was killed by our slavers soon after Rachel was born. And when do I meet your wife? Your son? They'll be waiting for us. On the way to the land. It's a long, long journey. It'll be a long, long time before we leave here. First, Pharaoh must be asked to let us go. Then beg, entreat. Finally, threatened. It will be a hard time. It's always hard for the innocent. It's so always they who must suffer first. We sacrifice a lamb, not a crocodile. 
One of the great mysteries. Oh, thank you, Leah. No, I'm Rachel. I told you I was Rachel. <laughs> Sorry. What God? The God who spoke from the burning bush on Mount Horeb. The bush burnt and burnt and was not consumed. And a voice said, I am sending one who shall set my people free. It's this uh, one God business I find hard to take in. Uh, what's this uh, God's position in relation to the other gods? Why go into that again? Oh, no, yes. not that. Explain that. That seems a reasonable thing to ask. There are no other gods. God is God. He is who he is. The God of the Israelites is the one God. Moses, huh? brother of Aaron, the one who killed the Egyptian overseer and had to run away. He thinks no one remembers. That's why he's back. What is all this? What kind of tale do you think you are spinning? True. Look, sir, I've always been a good friend of Egypt, haven't I? So? I can give good information, valuable information. This Moses is up to no good. <laughs> I'd appreciate a little Egyptian generosity. You're drunk, man. No. Get to work, man. Go on. Go on. You're a friend of Egypt. Go on. Go on. Go on. Our God is not a God of slavery. If you say there is one God, then this is one God who has sold us into slavery. Or else, one could say that uh, we have at least two gods, one to enslave and one to free. No, God may have allowed the wicked to enslave the innocent. This bondage may be a test, a proving of our right to be chosen. There are weapons other than bows and battering rams and pitch balls. There are bricks and mattocks. There are muscles. Fools! Egypt is the world. Only the maker of the earth and the sun and stars can prevail. God is our way. And our way to God is through him. I am not convinced. We will help you to change your ideas. Who? Oh. The young. Is it you? Is it really you? Yes. But I'm afraid I cannot prove my identity. The voice is enough. Everything else has changed, but the voice, no. Moses. Cousin Moses. You look like a very poor relation, if I may say so. You summoned me back to Egypt. Why did you summon me? I could not forget you. Others I forgot. Streams of bowing courtiers, wise men, sycophants, relations. None of them poor relations. A time came when I felt a homesickness for you. The cousin who taught me how to hunt gazelles the enigmatic prince of my boyhood. I must have been a most unlikable boy. I was, of course, too young to use you. And now you are old enough. Old enough. Also the master of the world, of the sacred blood of Horus. Blood that is knitted from the stars, divine and holy, wholly divine. Do you still listen to the voices of bats at nightfall? In the desert, there were many voices. Ones I never heard in Egypt. You did not hear my voice calling you? Or any voice that spoke of me? Yes. Yes, I did. A human voice? Not human. Not a human voice. The voices of the desert. That formless, shifting world, whistling and singing nonsense. There is no solidity, no certainty in the desert. Reality is here, cousin. For a thousand years, we have been the masters of reality. We have an exact and perfect an exquisite and almost painful knowledge of the nature of power, the means of its acquisition its growth, 
its maintenance. Power is here and forever. This is the real world, and you belong to it. You who know reality have been whoring too long among dreams of the desert. You are recalled to reality. Called, not recalled. Firstborn. Is he not beautiful? Beautiful. My son, he will reign after me. The unbroken and unbreakable chain of rule. The strength which makes the desert winds howl in impotence. And you choose those empty voices out of the dead sand. This I cannot comprehend. It's a simple matter, Majesty. I have discovered where I belong. You belong to us. To me. You ignore the truth. And the truth is that you are of Egypt of the blood, for the blood is not what passes from mother to son. That belongs to the order of the beasts. It is rather what is of the soul, whatever the soul is. Your true physical mother was the shadow. The woman who made herself your mother was the substance, remains the substance even in death. You are of Egypt. And one of my duties is to confirm that truth in your own life, in that bigger life we call history. The voices of the desert spoke hard metal. The swirling, shifting, insubstantial. These are in your words. I reject Egypt. I embrace my people. Your people, as you call them, are the tough skin of the hands and feet of Egypt, no more. But the body does not disown them. The truth is, Majesty, we are a, a different animal. We, we scent our destiny. We must be free to track it. Never! Never. I know that I that you will never be persuaded by entreaties. Egypt is locked against the voices of the desert. It must be signs. Signs? From whom or what or where? From the maker of the world, the God of my people. Signs, tricks. The Egyptian conjurers know them all. You are being the more Egyptian for thinking of signs. What will you do? Turn a stick to a snake? My sorceress can do that yawning. Make your snake swallow theirs? We must expect big magic from Moses. Must we not? I should be appalled if you let the mere nameless magicians beat you at that game. There shall be no such commerce between us. Pharaoh, but you must believe the, the signs come from a true Israelite. You are an Egyptian. You'll always be an Egyptian. The signs will persuade you otherwise. Let the true story begin. I shall not be in it. I'm not qualified. I'm slow of speech. Another of your fallacies. Three 
Three days. Three days. Are you mad? Three days in the desert. It's a small request. We have orders to sacrifice to the god of our people. Orders? We give the orders. You interest me, little man. Why in the desert? Because it was in the desert that my brother heard a command. Whose? Is who demands the sacrifice. You talk round and round. Round and round. Three days. Request refused. What request? Uh, this man says the slaves want to spend three days in the desert, sir. Who put you to this nonsense? It is not nonsense. We... With respect, sir, we do not consider it nonsense. You, we must do sacrifice in the desert. You have your gods, we have our god. You have not answered my question. It was my brother who heard the word of God. Why does not your brother make the request himself? He is slow of speech. And slow, perhaps, of understanding? When will you Israelites realize what you are? We are beginning to realize, sir. Take him back this answer and deliver it as slowly as you will. Sir, where's the straw? What? The straw. To make bricks with. We haven't any straw. The straw hasn't come. Oh, you have to have straw. I mean, with respect, sir. Of course we have to have straw. Mud, straw, the sun. Give us straw and we give you bricks. That's how it's always been, sir. There have been some changes. Nobody brings you straw anymore. You gather your own, or you do without. Is that clear? <laughs> Stop there. Sir, with respect, we own no fields, we have no straw. <laughs> it's not right, Joshua. You and your filthy... <laughs> Put the rod in their fists. You'll put the sword in their hands tomorrow or tonight. You and your brother. This god of yours, I hope he strikes you down. Both of you. Strikes you dead. Mad, misled. That's what the people think. They think wrong. The voice spoke true. Made no false promises. Nothing will be easy. But the Lord did make one error. The error of choosing me. Everything's 
what's going wrong since he's been here. Your people are sunken into a deeper slavery. You don't wish to set them free. Are they not right to have lost all hope? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Why was it I that had to be chosen? What shall I do? What shall I say to them? Moses. Moses, go to the Pharaoh. Say to him all that I bid you to say. But your voice shall be that of your brother Aaron. He shall speak for you. He shall stand in your place. As for you, you shall stand in the place of the Lord God. For the Lord God. Whatsoever person desires to present his petition to the most sacred majesty of the Pharaoh Manetha must do so as follows. He must step into the sacred waters and thus be purified. Thus purified, he may proceed to the royal shore. that you accede to our petition to go into the desert for three days to do sacrifice. This is the express commandment of our Lord God, who otherwise will show his displeasure in many ways, for the Lord God of the Israelites is a jealous God.
Clever, Cousin Moses. Very clever magic. But no more magic than what my own magicians can do. Look, look, look. Eh? See, God keeps us unscathed and wholesome while the Egyptians scream. How do you explain that the Israelites remain totally immune from these uh, nuisances? The reason may be geographical. Ethan is somewhere from the Nile, sheltered, removed from the causative pollution. Dark it is getting. Eyes. The signs are before you. How can you still have any doubts? Oh, it's hard to take in, I know. We are a weak people, enslaved, indolent, hopeless. But the God of the universe has chosen us. Chosen for what? For the working out of his divine purpose on earth, so it seems. And what we must do now is to prepare for the day, the day of leaving our bondage. But this bondage is the only thing that we have. We are old, and it is hard to face the new it life. It is a hard God. We must learn to think of ourselves as a people. Many of us will be discarded on the way, worn out, useless. We who start this journey may not be those that finish it, but we're all one, and the dead and the yet unborn all share in this common purpose, this common goal. I don't like this talk, Aaron. It's all blown up words. We're too old for this talk of common whatever it is, purposes and goals and an endless journey. How can you speak like this when the Lord has shown himself on our behalf? Does this mean nothing? It means that we are the chosen people. It means that we must face the desert and dream of the promise. It means... Ah, is it blasphemous to wish to be left alone? <laughs> the Lord God did not cease to smite the Egyptians with plague and misery. The locusts ate of the green of the land, and the cattle were stricken with pestilence, even unto death. And the people were stricken with boils, running sores. And it was beyond the skill of the physicians of the pharaoh to cure them. I have tried to understand. Have the gods failed him? He has done more for the gods than they could reasonably expect to be done. Count the bricks in one pyramid alone would take years. What has gone wrong? And the land was a land of dry bones. 117,567. That is the latest computation, Divine Majesty. I'm not greatly interested in numbers. It is not flesh and bone and possession that we lose. It is the heart of the empire. It is the central idea. Majesty, you cannot so easily ignore the suffering of your subjects. If I may say this, our friend is distraught. He has lost both a wife and a daughter. He can have another wife within a day, another daughter within a year. Let us quieten our hearts. Let the brain speak. Listen. This is the greatest empire the world has seen. Perhaps the greatest it will ever see. Our cities are crammed with all manner of merchandise. Our ships sail all the known seas. Our towers kiss heaven. Our armies shake the earth. We prosper. We prospered. At the very core of our empire lies a truth. Or shall I say, a belief that has long been taken for truth. 
It is the belief that the ruler of the empire has been appointed by the gods themselves. The pharaoh is the issue of their flesh. But now, the gods seem to turn against their own flesh. Starvation, disease, dissension, distrust of authority. Why? Why? Can the changeless gods change? Can the eternally strong grow weak? Can a new god appear from nowhere? And overthrow the tables of the eternal? Your divine majesty has touched upon an interesting, indeed compelling, theological point. The gods are the gods, eternal, self-created, subsisting out of time. There are no new gods, but one old god, long removed from the concerns of the Egyptian state, has been conjured. You know which god. You know by whom. You take us back to an old time. A time when the false belief in a single god possessed many of the most subtle and high-placed Egyptians. You refer to Moses. This belief has come back and it has attached itself to a race of slaves. It is logical. Will the slaves willingly embrace the gods of their masters? These questions, as I've said, are of immense theoretical interest, uh, but the problem now... It is a simple matter, Majesty. The devotees of the god ask that they may do sacrifice to him. It would be a mark of kingly clemency to grant. To be forced to grant? To be impelled to grant? Only three days, Majesty. With guarantees of return. Guarantees? some water. It's a new thing for the Israelites to be feared. We were always feared. If the Egyptians had merely destroyed us, our memory would still have been feared. There are many dead nations that crawl out of the ashes. But they brought us low. They made us despised. And the fear, how is it expressed? They tried to bribe us into leaving into sneaking out in the dark. I shall, of course, be happy to take care of that side of the operation. We need such resources. And there is no need to wait to be given. One may take. There are a number of fine villas abandoned. Death, a plague. I knew some of the victims well. <laughs> through, through my position, of course. They're well served now. God curses them. Hara has his craft. So does the builder. So has the maker of song. The Lord has his craft too. And it may be called a dance of numbers. So far he has smitten Egypt seven times. Rivers of blood, flies, frogs, gnats, the cutting down of their sheep and cattle, and the curse of the teeth of the locusts, and now the plague. The making of the world was a dance of seven. Bringing low of Egypt will be a dance of ten. In the heart of the Pharaoh, there is some kind of a dance. The heart must soften, then harden, then soften, then harden for one last time. 
and like a stone it will crack it will shatter and Egypt will shatter with it strange a dancing god a god of the young what stops our dancing out of Egypt now the Egyptians are demoralized they could never stop us yes yes why the delay we need the delay we must prepare our order of march we must take with us all of our possessions our cattle our carts our supplies of grain and water then there will be the problem of the sick and the unwilling the cries of those who would last out their days here in Pithom, women with child and then there is the question of unifying the clans of creating degrees of leadership and the question of arms defense and the training of our army that too joshua let us not forget the treasury <laughs> Gods of justice, strive out the unjust God. Remove the curse laid on thy people. Restore us to health. Thou art all powerful. Thou art all merciful. Gods be merciful. Gods be merciful. We come again, King Manefta, to ask that we be released Have from our... Have you no respect for our religion, Cousin Moses? We are doing holy work. We are trying to avert these inexplicable nuisances from the innocent Egyptian people. Not inexplicable. Not innocent. Very well, then. Our ceremonies are tainted by the presence of the unbeliever. Go. Do we have an answer, sir? May we take an answer back to our people? Are you pleased with your power, cousin? Does it satisfy you to have impaired, even destroyed, this great flower of order? You want me to bow down to a god who is the enemy of the state? Without the state, we are nothing, any of us. Order, beauty, majesty, the unbroken chain of rule. To destroy the state is to betray us to those windy voices out there in the desert. Do you want to see Egypt become broken stone? Lizards sunning themselves on broken stone? You cannot maintain order on... Ah! You have recovered your voice. On slavery. What slavery? Any slavery? Or the slavery of your people? Will you not have your highest and your lowest when you shape your dream kingdom? Will you not build your own pyramid? Sir, we need an answer. Be silent, little man. I'm talking to your better. We will build on the covenant. On the bond freely embraced, the contract between man and man. I talk in a land you've turned into a charnel. I cannot stand your smell much longer. You had better go. May we have a scribe called in? Let this be written down and stamped with the royal seal. The word of the Pharaoh, Moses. You may go into the desert and perform your sacrifice. I have, may the gods forgive me, spoken. You have not finished, Majesty. What have I not said? Ah, yes. The men may go and do sacrifice to the god of destruction. The women and children shall remain behind. As this is a kind of war, cousin Moses, shall we call them hostages? The heart of the pharaoh is hard. You have not seen enough signs. You have not suffered enough. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take up a handful of the dust of the earth and hurl it into the sky.
desire that you leave Egypt and go into the desert, there to conduct your sacrifice. And the women and children? The women and children are to go with you. You expect something more. There is nothing more in my instructions. Nevertheless, we will wait. Look, here it is written clear. Why can you not go? Why can they not go? They cannot go because they know there is something more. What is the something more? Hmm? You, Aaron, his voice, what is it? We are to go to the desert for three days to do sacrifice. In the middle of the month of Nisan, men, women, children, our beasts, our goods. No. You have eaten of the bread of Pharaoh and have drunk of his wine. For three days, you will neither eat nor drink. You will go forth to fast and do sacrifice. And then you will return. And your beasts will bleat and bellow a welcome home. Your pitiful goods will lie snug awaiting you. This is the contract that the God cease his torments that you go forth for three days. This will not do. The covenant we made has long been broken. There is no further bond between us. When we leave this land, we leave as free men, taking with us our wives, our children, our sheep, our oxen, our goods. Not the paring of a nail will remain in the land of Egypt. Not a hair or a scale from the skin of a beast. You go forth naked, you return naked. Your heart is still hard against the Lord and the servants of the Lord. There is one last trial yet to come. It will not fall directly on your head. You will live to see the Israelites leave the land of Egypt. But this one last trial yet to come will be the most terrible trial in all the world for you unless you let our people go. Moses. Moses. Why do I not kill you? Why do I not thrust in this sword myself? The orders stand. Go now. I wish never to see your face again. So be it. The angel of death. Who shall describe him or her? Like a trained hound of the Egyptian hunters, he carries the scent in his nostrils. He will follow the scent. He will follow the scent to the firstborn. You won't hold this? It's the last thing, tenth figure of the dance. Four days from now, on the night of the 14th day of Nisan, the nose and the teeth of the angel of death will dart straight for the firstborn. Be it Egyptian or Israelite, there'll be no nice distinction. Even the firstborn whelp of the bitch's litter, the first hatchling of the hen, he will follow the scent. Our firstborn? Ours? Don't be afraid. We have a secret. We shall put him off the scent. With your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, so says the Lord, for the time is with us. And you shall eat the flesh of the lamb, roasted and in haste. And the bread you eat with it shall be unleavened bread. 
for it must be a bread of haste, with no time for the leavening. And you shall season your meat with bitter herbs, that the bitterness of the exile shall be in your mouths at the very door of the exodus. Kill the lambs now, and pray as you kill, for you kill in the name of the Lord's Passover, and on the doorposts and on the lintels of your houses, daub some of the blood as a sign. But why? As a sign, he said. A sign of what? Just a sign. It's a good game. It shall be called Passover, for tomorrow we pass over from death to life. And this strange supper tonight is a ceremony to remind us who we are and what. The silence strikes. It is like a new noise. He's coming. God help them, he's coming. safety of the house and all within it. May the first nameless who guards the doors of the eyes be doubly watchful. May the second nameless who sits in the doorways of the ears be aware of the rustling and breathing of the maligned intruder. See him smile. May the third nameless who lives suspended in the air of the nostril. No evil threatens him. Smell out the evil him who approaches. He is happy. The intent of My precious. The beneficent. The vapors of the night. The no harm shall come to him. No. The sun comes again. For he is my precious. The world is living. The sun blesses. Be quiet. What was that? A servant. The firstborn of a servant. Nothing shall. Nothing shall. Stand round us with your torches. Burn your incense. Say your prayer, say it! Gods of the seven worlds, hear. Hearken. Let the word of your servant be sweet in the ear of the guardian of the living. Let no evil touch your servant this night. Let the dark be beneficent. Let the vapors of the night like the balm of the morning. Let the souls of the evil dead sleep and be unenticed by the smell of the smoke that light. I do now. Beg you to comfort him on his passage through the tunnels of the night. Beseech you to remember that he is of your divine flesh and to restore him to the light where he is needed. Or do I see you already as very hollow, very weak, impotent, a sham. Am I born too early or too late? 
Does heaven remake itself? Has the dominion passed over once again to that single god who was neither sun nor moon, but the light of both? In your eyes, there is nothing. Your head is the head of a bird. Rise up. Go forth from among my people. Both you and the people of Israel and go. Serve the Lord as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds and bless your freedom. Be gone! And bless me also. Me also. I'll come later. What is that? What? What are you doing with that? I'm just taking care of the treasury, that's all. You are stealing. I'm not You're stealing. Sure. If you don't want me to do it, I won't do it. I saw you stealing.
quiet, isn't it? <laughs> Not quiet in the other mud pits. He should never have done it. Shh. You never know who's listening. But it's true. The Nubians, the Berbers, the Greeks, they all want to go into the desert to do sacrifice to what they call their gods. That's why he should never have done it. Shh. Of course, it could all have been a coincidence. The plague, I mean. The flies, the locusts, and so on. And I don't believe that about the blood. The river, you mean? Yes. But it was blood. Oh. Did you smell it? Taste it and see it congeal? Well, no, but my brother-in-law saw it. Yeah. And he said it was as red as any blood he'd ever seen in a slaughterhouse. Yeah. <laughs> it was all against nature. It was as if nature had gone wrong. And then these... They took advantage of it. They didn't cause it. Oh, no. But they pretended they did. Huh. Cunning. And they're not being his against nature, too. What do you mean? It's against nature not to have slaves. I mean, how do you get things done without slaves? You've got to have slaves. It stands to reason. before us, God's sign that he's with us. God works through different. He works through the smoke and the rain and the dust of the desert. He works through that pillar of cloud. All we have to do is follow him. Honey, where to? To the promised land. Where else? I hope you know where it is. The shock to the people has naturally been profound. It is manifested in a slow, numbing illness of doubt. The whole concept of the monarchy is inevitably in jeopardy, since there seems, in the eyes of the common people, to have been a withdrawal of divine power. The riots have been contained, Divine Majesty. There has been bloodshed. A little, not much. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And, of course, the great evil has already turned into a vague dream. Except among... the bereaved. Wounds heal. Anger does not heal, nor hatred. What is to be done? The Pharaoh, out of his divine clemency, granted the request of the Israelite workforce that they be permitted to sacrifice to their god in the desert. The period of leave requested was three days. How many days have they been out of Egypt? Five, your divine majesty. So, we bring them back. Nothing could be simpler. It's mine. It's mine. They stole it from me. They took it. It was mine. It was mine. We cannot go on like this. We can't stop now. This is not the time to reorganize. We shall be destroyed if we do not. They've used up all their water. They're stealing each other's food. We need discipline. Police. No. Police, indeed. That won't be our way. We'll organize in a new way, from within. We? Who's we? I and a few others. Young people, progressive people. Good word, progressive. Progress means going forward, moving. Egypt belongs to our past. Our past to be wiped out. Our past must never be wiped out. If all others forget, even if Egypt forgets, 
we must remember. A minimum of violence, you understand. We are not fighting a war. They are no army. Threats will be in order. Hostages, especially high ones. As for Moses... As for Moses, sir? No violence, no. He is to be brought back. Stand trial. A public execution. The charge, Majesty. There must presumably be a formal arrest. You ask about charges? All the charges in the world. Blasphemy, disaffection, treason, murder. Oh, yes. Yes. Very much murder. moment, no doubt. At least we can liberate them from that. They cannot go forward. They can go sideways, like crabs. But whatever they do, they will be certainly pincered by us. As far as my saw. Oh, yes. Their humiliation must be clearly visible. Speak to me. Yeah. Have you heard the orders for tomorrow? Yes. We shall pass on to the sea. There, there will be no escape. We shall be trapped. No. We shall cross Belim. With no boats, no bridges, no fording places. Believe me, we shall cross over. Come, let's go round the camp. Tomorrow they will need all their courage. Doesn't seem much like freedom to me. Orders, orders all the time. Nothing but sand and beyond that the sea. There's only one way, and that's back. Egyptians know it. They'll be here to take us back. But if we go back freely, it'll be different. They're reasonable. He's not reasonable. Leading them to die, that's that's all it is. The Egyptians could be generous to those they knew were their friends. No hard words. Back to the old reasonable way. Triumph of common sense. Ta -ta. Look out! We were just protecting the treasury. There are thieves among us. I know what you're thinking, but we had no such intention. We're all together in this. We trust Moses and Aaron and, and you... Uh... blowing out of the dawn. Oh, Lord, if it be your will. If it be your will.
Confidence in your leadership, huh? <laughs> you will always be confident, Dapan, when things go well. Oh, no, no. Well or ill, we acknowledge you as our undoubted leader. I am not your leader. The Lord is your leader. I am only a servant. Never forget the Lord. <laughs> this is a time for rejoicing, not for thinking of the Lord. We ask you, in token of our amity and your awareness of our confidence, to drink wine with us, your people. I have a weak head, Nathan, but I'm grateful for your confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow will be a hard day, especially for some people. You ought to make it clear to your tribes that the worst is still to come. Is it wise to speak to our people of that now? Is it not enough to live for the day? The day's march, the rest at nightfall. Your task is to teach the agonies of freedom. Freedom is a bitter gift. It is hard for a man to keep authority with such a slogan. Must we build on false promises? To think of the day is dangerous. If we eat and drink what the day brings, we shall have nothing left for the morrow. The day is for slaves not for free men. Let us begin by thinking of the weak. How does one think about the weak? The Lord made the heavens and the earth in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. We shall follow the Lord. The seventh day shall be called the Sabbath. On that day, we shall rest, think of the Lord, drink in new strength from the Lord. And this shall be a law. This shall be a law, and those who break the law shall be punished. Punished? How punished? We'll think of that later. It's enough to speak now of the Lord's displeasure. And believe me, there will come a day when that will seem punishment enough. Thank you, thank you. The old men wisely saved their water. You unwisely used up yours, and now you steal. It's the law. It's the law that this desert of yours taught us. The strong takes from the weak. God makes them weak. God makes us strong. Is a crocodile not stronger than a man? A man is strong in a different way. What a man has, he has through foresight and prudence. You shall not take from him what he has. What would you do, Moses? Bring down another plague? You'd do better to lead us all to water. I will lead you to water in time. But now I tell you that you must not steal. No more than that? For the moment. For now, think that you are displeasing the Lord and that he could strike you if he wished. But the Lord would prefer you to be men, not crocodiles. Now go. Thank you. 
You know where we are? Tribes call it the wilderness of Shur. Long months march to Elim. A long months. And what is the between here and Elim? Sand there and sand. Sand and more sand. be exactly sure. We strayed so far off the path I knew I... Listen, I promise you... Promises? It's all promises, isn't it? Promise freedom, promise land, promise milk and honey. We can do without the milk and honey. What you really say... We want the water of Egypt. our people will be dead. Have faith. For one more day. One day, yes. What then? And why are we following this road? This is not the way to the land you have promised our people. Canaan is there, to the east. So are the Egyptians, Joshua, and their allies. Is this why, if I'm permitted to ask, you're taking us towards the mountains of the Sinai? How did you know we're going to the Sinai? I know how to read the stars. And my thoughts? Belim. Yes, Belim. God is with us. Thank <laughs> you. 
You, my brother. I don't know you. But the woman I... Are you not the wife of Eliphaz? Your husband is old. Youth is drawn to youth and the lusty pleasures of the bed, I know. But it's a sinful bed. There's no sin in pleasure. Or should there be any pleasure in sin? If your husband knew about this, he could send you away. And the children would grieve. He knows nothing. We've been careful. Not careful enough to prevent me from knowing. And if I know, others know. Listen. You, we are trying to build a nation. The families are the bricks of that nation. If the families crack, the nation will fall. We're a very small crack in a very small brick. Never think of yourself as an exception. Only God is above the law. It's a bad business. What will you do? Nothing. I've done all I can do. Does he have a wife? Who knows? He's a strange one. Perhaps he's beyond passion. <laughs> Come. No, I thought I heard one of the children. You couldn't have. Why do you have to move? Why not stay here? Here is everything. Because the promised land is elsewhere. You always say that. Will we live to see it? You and I? I don't know. The children. They'll see it. We could settle here so happy. Pastures, water. The whole place laughs and rings with water. Yes. But we have to have something more than an oasis. Have to? Yes, have to. Call it the destiny of our nation. <laughs> it's a big word. Elizeba, I don't believe there's anything after this life, not for you, me, the others. We die alone, and we go into the dark alone. But all of us together made into a nation. That's different. You call us a nation? Not yet. It's still being made. It has to be kneaded like dough. But when it is made, when it lives and breathes and draws its life from the laws that sustain it, then there'll be no end to it. There have been other nations. They died. Isn't Egypt dying? We shall not die. Oh, yes, men and women will die. But Israel will live forever. Because for the first time, the nation will not be greater than the smallest member of it. Did he tell you all this? Some of it. Some of it I worked out for myself. <laughs> Always the same. No sooner do we unload than we have to load again. Those on donkey's backs, those on our backs, and the heaviest load is Moses. Moses. He got to this place by chance, by good luck. And then there may be more good luck, and then there may not. One thing we can be sure of, sand, thirst, Moses pretending to know where he is, pretending there's a god up there showing the way. But there's no way, and there's no god, sand, sand, and Moses. Onions, garlic, and cake. Why did you take us out of Egypt? Why couldn't you leave us alone? We were happy there. At least we didn't starve. Will you never cease to complain? You say you lack bread. You lack meat. Yes. Well, you shall have meat to eat in the evening. And in the morning, 
bread to the full. You have the Lord's promise that this is so. Now go away. Dove! I'm sick of you! But God help me, you're all I have. for a miracle where there is none. I never take credit for miracles. You told me about the migration of the quails when we were back in Egypt, <laughs> and I was grabbing the dirt off you. They rest at night here in the scrublands. They're easily caught. Hardly a miracle. A miracle, I suppose, is something you need happening when you need it. Will they get their bread? Bread? You said uh, in the morning. So I did. But I didn't say which morning. <laughs> Have you heard of manna? Bread from heaven? Bread from heaven. It's the resin that falls from the tamarisk trees. A fine flake thing, fine as hoffrost, white as coriander seed. And the taste is the taste of wafers made with honey. A poem? A song, sung by my father-in-law, Jethro. He taught it to me, and I sang it to Zipporah. I sang it above the body of Zipporah. How soon shall I meet Zipporah? Not too soon. There'll be some more days of grumbling, then a few short lived days of joy. And God help us, there'll be a time of bloodshed. <laughs>
like bread. Each shall gather according to his need. He who gathers much shall have no more. He who gathers little shall have no less. Gather only as much as you can eat. On the day before Saturday, the Sabbath, you shall gather twice as much. For on the seventh day, there will be none of the Lord's bread. What are you doing? You know the law of the Sabbath? What law? What Sabbath? The law has been clearly laid down. The Sabbath is for rest. No journeying, no work. We weren't working. We were gathering food. There's no difference. Gather food, shear sheep, pitch a tent. It's all work. It's stupid. <sighs> May I say something? Oh, yes, please. If God felt the need to rest from his labors on the seventh day, who are we that we should think we're better than he is? No, man is not made only for work, but also to think. And for thought, there has to be leisure. And that leisure must come regularly. Totally. It's greed that led you into this. You'll go hungry till tomorrow. You won't get too hungry. Tomorrow starts at sunset, today. Now there were certain tribes of the desert that saw the Israelites passing through the desert with their goods and cattle and camels and sheep. Among these tribes were the Amalekites, a fierce and warlike people that dwelt in the caves of the rocks. They moved with speed, for they were skilled in the taming of horses. And with speed, they sought to drive the Israelites from their land and to prey on their goods and their cattle. Oh, my God. 
We're defenseless. We have no weapons. Only these wretched things. I always said it would come to this. The road must be kept open. Excuse me. I have something to suggest. What is your name? Kure. You experienced at war? No, but... If I may suggest a simple strategy. Moses had first heard the word of God, and beneath it dwelt his wife, Zipporah, and his little son, Gersom. a long time without the roast lamb and the mutton stews I used to give you and the love. You're very thin. And older. I didn't say that. Moses! Moses! Reuben in Judah. Impossible. It was some matter over a woman, a married woman of Judah and a single man of Reuben. They're developing a taste for war, tribal war, brother against brother. It was, to be truthful, the possession of weapons that drove them to the use of weapons. It's always thus. If we have to fight other nations, so be it. But we must not fight among ourselves. How many dead? Only one. A very small war. Was it by chance the... Yes. The single man of Reuben, no longer able to love the married woman of Judah. This is not war. This is murder. War is against an enemy, someone strange, of strange tongue, of evil intention. But we are one, of common speech and custom of common belief, 
chosen together as one people, as one family, for the special favor and the special chastening of the Lord. That deed is not a brave deed of warfare, but a foul act of murder. Let the accused come forward. What have you to say? I acted under orders. We were ordered to attack the enemy. Enemy? There was no enemy. A man killed a man and that is murder. And what is the punishment for murder? Let the elders of the tribes come forward and speak. What is the punishment for murder? The washing out of the blood by compensation. Let the young man or his parents Make good the loss of one of our able-bodied men. Let us have a warrior, or a slave, or say, cattle, or sheep. No, Avram, no. We cannot value human life in terms of possessions, for human life is precious and irreplaceable, and cannot be treated as a kind of money. What is the punishment for murder? If we cannot uh, put a value on human life, then we cannot compute the punishment. True, and yet not true. We can value human life, but only in its terms. A life for a life. A death for a death. How shall the murderer... I mean, how is it to be done? Oh, Joshua, to think of that now. Do you suppose I intended his immediate execution? Let the judges of his guilt revel in their own confusion. Did he or did he not do it? Can we trust the witnesses? Or did perhaps the dead man drop dead in fright when he saw the knife approaching? We've hardly begun to conceive any of us of the preciousness of a human life. I have promised one you and one ram. This is clearly a simple matter of misunderstanding. You had a simple offer in mind. I said lamb, not ram. Oh, 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 now, just a moment. I think, wait, wait. We wanted it by the way. We So quiet, so peaceful. You'll wear yourself out. I know, I know all about it. Organize, delegate. The basis of good government is the ten. The what? The ten. Good junior officers, each one in charge of ten. Then senior officers in charge of fifty. Then you climb the ladder. Very good men in charge of a hundred. And then at last the cream. Leaders of a thousand. God-fearing men. Trustworthy. Family men. Preferably young men. Men like Joshua. He is one who carries a new fire. But first I must tend this fire for him. And warm my hands by it. Joshua. Is he married? No. It sounds like, like the organization of an army. And so it is. You are an army, but an army of human souls. You will be fighting your way towards this land of milk and honey. It will be a long time before the cows and goats are born that will yield that milk. And for that honey, you must build your own hives. <laughs> I'm being summoned. God help me. That is a prayer you will be able to express in person.
Say this to the people of Israel. If you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be to me a nation of holiness. And the words of the covenant shall be set down on stone imperishable, that they may be seen by the eyes of men. But the choice, the choice is theirs. Soon I will leave you, and I leave to you the main duties of administering, ordering, judging. A task which will long absorb my time, my energy, and such poor brains as I have, will be the task of making the law that you must administer. They are laws for all men, and they are laws the world has not seen before. First, we have to remember that these laws come from God. But so long as men shall live in freedom, unoppressed, it is on such laws that their lives must be based. And they must know that these laws are sanctified by God himself. God is not a demon of the rivers, or a fire, or air. He is not a stone idol. He is spirit. And the spirit, he must be worshipped. So there shall be no making of idols, of stone, or iron, or wood, or silver. The very name is sacred, and its use must be sacred. The day of rest, which is God's day, shall be sacred also. It shall be a day for the family, and the family itself shall be seen on that day as sacred. The family and the bond of marriage, the children that are the fruit of that marriage, all shall be bound into a garland of honor and love. And what a man owns shall be sacred, since it comes from God. Be it his goods or be it his life, both are inviolate. No killing, no stealing, no coveting the things our fellow men possess, for all sin begins in desire. And above all, we are free beings. Copies of that God who is the primal and ultimate free being. We are free even to choose to enter into a covenant with him, with him who made us. And now I ask you, will you accept that covenant? Will you accept that covenant? Yes, we accept. Will you accept the covenant? Yes. yes. I must enter. You understand I must be entirely alone. Make your camp here. How long will it be? The world took six days to make. To make laws for the Israelites may take longer. A good deal longer. But remember, if all this should be too much for me... It won't. It won't. Remember, I say that you are the next chosen. But there must be others before me. Your brother, some of the elders. I must look to the young, to you. And now. Be near, Joshua, be near. For you two are called. It's a cold place, my friend. When will Moses be back? Soon, very soon. Aaron? Aaron? Any, any news from up there? You've a strange choice of words, my friend. Oh, I apologize. A very homely and earthy word. I merely wondered, well, when he was coming back to us. It seems to be already a long time. Two Sabbaths, one of which you remember you neglected to keep. Well, I forgot. You will remember that I said I forgot. You will also remember that I said I thought it was nonsense. And you were rebuked for blasphemy. 
The Lord's Day is not to be termed nonsense. Corey. Oh, I thought we were all free men now, huh? All entitled to a free opinion. Free huh? under the law. Where is this law you talk about so much? Huh? I hear much about the law, but I see nothing of it. You'll see all you want to see, Dathan. All in good time. I wonder. <laughs> well, is that blasphemy too? Is it blasphemy to wonder whether he'll ever come down again? He may receive new orders. Go down, Moses, to the other side. There are more slaves to bring to freedom. We've slaves enough, Datan. Some men will always be slaves. <laughs> and tell them that no one is to work on the Sabbath. Sabbath is my day. Oh, but I say, why don't we have that one day and you can have all the other days so that we can lay down and rest. Because I told you, and tell them, if they do something wrong, I will punish them. <laughs> what will you do? I will come down in a thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that. You know the law. There is to be no worshipping of graven images. And that means also the pretense of worshipping graven images. Is there no more room for children's games? No, there is danger even in children's play. What do you want? The treasure. Treasure? To see it. Just to see it. To see if it's still here. Come. Come with us. Come on. Get on your feet. What do you want? To get away. What do you want the to do? The gods have abandoned us. We must get away from here. We'll all die here. This place is no good. We want to divide the treasure. Now, at once. We want to see well, the I treasure. I can't deliver the treasure to you, you know that. Please, come. Well, that's no business of yours. That's my treasure. Go on, take it out of your place. Come on, you see it. Come on, you see it. Come on, you see it. We don't want to see the treasure, so show it to us now. What is all this? Be quiet. Be quiet. Now, what is all this? Ask him. We wish to see the treasure. Yes, yes that's what we want. Treasure. Show us the treasure. Show us the treasure. Yes. I speak in front of all the people. Yes. yes. Show us the treasure. Yes. Nathan speaks for all of us. Yes. Nathan is our leader. We want to see the treasure. Show us. And keep them back. Like sheep without a shepherd. Someone must care for them. There. Are you satisfied? Quite satisfied. My compliments. Very well guarded. You knew this, Tatan. So what game are you playing? Game? Playing? We are all afraid. The gods of Egypt frown on us. Your brother, our great leader, has been spirited away. Tell him, my friends. Speak for yourselves. Nathan is right. We will. Yeah. Yeah. We must be We must be We must be We must be We want a true Give God. Each man his share. Yeah. Good yeah. God. Be silent. Yeah. Hear me. God will help us. Escape from here, Aaron. Have you forgotten the covenant that you swore to the God of Israel? Remember his words. You shall have no other gods but me. Let us have Be silent, lest the Lord strike you in his terrible anger. Moses is dead. My brother is not dead. Do not be afraid. Even now, he's in the mountain conversing with our God. Lead us out of 
You wish to leave this place, yes, but how? You will never find your way alone. Who will lead you across the desert? True, we shall be lost. Yes, we shall be lost. Yes, the treasure. Divide the treasure. True, the treasure belongs to all of you. But how can it be divided into equal parts? See. This vessel. Can this vessel be broken equally? Shall not one family have more than another? For this jewel, what man has the skill to divide this jewel in half? No. No, I tell you, this treasure cannot be divided. It belongs to the whole nation. It was given to us by the Egyptians in payment for years and years of suffering. It represents the grief of generations. You see, Aaron? They are listening to you. They love you. You have their confidence already. You, Aaron. Lead us. Lead us, Aaron. Lead us, Aaron! And all, saying that he's no longer there, that he's disappeared. They're all saying it, even the young. Whether he's there or not, you are here. The time has come for you to take charge, to rule. I'm doing all I can. You can't go on saying no. Wait. Have they been asking you for gods? Hmm? For gods, gods. Not for some big bearded father up the mountain. Yes. Yes, they've been asking for gods. They're fools. No, they're afraid. And you, you and your brother. You talk of the big invisible God who brought us out of the land of Egypt into the bondage of Sheetan. And they don't understand. No, well, of course they don't understand. They've been slaves. He's tried them too hard. I will talk to them. I will try to help them to understand. Talking is not enough now. You have to do something.
People of Israel, you have done great wrong. You have murmured among yourselves and demanded gods. But your wrongdoing was that of children who cannot understand. You still do not understand the great thing that has happened to us. We have been chosen by God himself, not by gods, but by the one true indivisible God who made us and made everything. Try to understand this. Now, this image is not God. The very idea is absurd. But it will remind you of God each day that you pass by it. For it is an image of strength, of loving strength. Its head, the sun, its forehead, the moon, its limbs, the four corners of the universe. Look, it's that animal, the one I saw in the sky. Yes, it's a calf. And it is fashioned out of the gold that belongs to all of you. So what you see is the image of our unity as a people. The unity of a people chosen by God himself. The great God of gods, whose silver is the moon, whose gold the sun, whose jewels the eternal constellations of heaven. <laughs> They just needed to be kept busy. They're happy now. It will not be just that for long. I saw some old men this morning, touching it for luck, as they said. And there was a young woman giving thanks. It's good to give thanks. To give thanks to an image? Her child had been ill and now was better. She said the... the thing, the calf, is magical. I tell you, they don't think it's a god. Anyway. I have to gain some time. What do we buy it with? That gold thing up there? <laughs> <laughs> Risky. You'd never get away with it. <laughs> I'd rather drink this than take that smoke stuff. What, that? It gives you visions of the promised land, so they say. It makes you sick afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming down soon. Who says so? It's only a rumor. We ought to have a night of it. How do you mean? There'll be no celebration when he gets here. He'll have a law against celebrations. All nicely carved out. Yeah? Yes. 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 We must celebrate before he gets down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> celebrate what? <laughs> we can think of something. The fever must reach its height, and then he'll grow cool again. It's just a matter of waiting. Give him nothing to drink. Bathe his forehead with water. People are bringing you balls on the right.
the desert. Show us where we must go.
Mischief below. Let us see what the mischief is. We were not involved. Your people, the Levites, were not involved. Not involved? Not in stopping it? What could we do? Assemble them. said you would accept the covenant. But you had no faith. You are a frail and ignorant people. And now the tablets of the law, so painfully, so lovingly inscribed, must be broken. For what you accepted in freedom was rejected in freedom. And for this you must suffer, since freedom always has its price. 
You must suffer in ways that you will see, bear, smell, taste, feel in the very nerve and the very marrow. But for the moment, we must enact the rite of the breaking of the covenant. your God. What you worship must be your bane. What you took unto yourselves in the spirit, you must now take unto yourselves in the flesh. What you kissed, you must eat and drink. I have appointed officers of my own tribe of Levites to see that mouths that cried out in obscene ecstasy shall now cry out in a different manner. start again. Once more I ascend the mountain to take counsel with the Lord, our God. But first, will you promise to worship no other God but Him? Yes! Nor to make images of things that are on the earth for profane and sinful worship? Yes! yes! So Moses went up the mountain a second time, and the tribe of the Levites, that were his own tribe, prepared a house for the new covenant. And the children of Israel waited for Moses to return to them, that he might carry the pardon of the Lord among his people. Yes, sir. He's very busy. He has Israel to look after. of the covenant in your keeping Aaron Aaron the priest Aaron the priest how am I to take that in manner of a punishment a priest is God's voice could one wish to be higher than God's voice once I was your voice well taken not in the manner of a punishment but in the manner of a promotion well then to my first office. God go with you, man of God.
Hereon are inscribed God's laws. Every word shall be accounted sacred. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. God, who art a God of justice, be also, we beseech thee, a God of forgiveness. If we have sinned once, shall we not sin again? If we were perfect, would we have need of thee? And God was there. For if they had not been singing, they would have heard him cry. The river. The reeds, the floating cradle. Girl, who are you? Can you get him a wet nurse? And I did. I turned him into an Egyptian. So many gods, but not the one true god. So many thousands of years for it to come to the light. And still they will not see. And when they see, they will say, what good is it? Rest, Miriam. Rest. And when the city is built, it will be destroyed. And the temple will be destroyed. They'll be made to wander further. For there is no abiding city. Only the dark. I must talk to my brother Moses. I am here, Miriam. You will not see it. Let the soul of this thy servant go calmly to its haven, where there is neither change nor suffering, where the mill of the heart grinds no more of the bread of tribulation. Of the tribe of Reuben, Shamur, son of Sakur. Of the tribe of Simon, Shaphat, son of Hor. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh. Of the tribe of Issachar, Eagle, son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Joshua, son of Nun. Over there, over the mountain, the land of Canaan. Yes, the promised land. A land so fertile, it is doubtless inhabited by people of rich flesh and strong bone. But whoever now possesses that land, possesses it not by God's promise. The land is ours, the land of our fathers. But it will not be ours for the easy taking. Your task is to spy out the land, to see what it is, to see the people. Are they weak? Are they strong? Are they few or many? And now, be of good courage and bring us the fruit of that land. Joshua, let's be going. something off and then we wait. We wait for months. It's like laying the plates for a meal when you know there is nothing to eat. 
Remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt? And the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic? You make me thirsty and there'll be no water till tomorrow. Is anything being done, I mean magic or spells or anything, to get something done? Shh, that's against the law. You're coming with us. What precisely were they doing on the Sabbath? They were gathering palm fronds to set a fire. Harmless enough, it seems. But knowing that the Covenant is strict on this matter, and knowing that you yourself... Yes? Knowing that you yourself set great store by the punctilious observance of the Sabbath rest, not I. Not I, but God. Its punctilious observance, as you so grandiloquently term it, is of the very essence of the law, to abstain from work that the body may be at rest and the spirit at one with God. One day in seven. Can we not spare one day in seven to honor our Creator? The men in question were rebuked, naturally. But they did not seem repentant. What happened was that one of them was discovered later in the day gathering dry sticks, tinderwood. The rebuke had been of no avail. And now? And now I seek instructions as uh, to an appropriate punishment. God's day. The Sabbath must not be defiled. Let them be stoned to death. Forgive me. But I don't think I... Let them be stoned to death. With respect and deference. But I do not think that my people could possibly accept and it. you or your people suggest an alternative punishment? More rebukes, tortures, imprisonment? We are all in prison till we reach our promised land. Best be bold and be done with it. The law is the law, one and indivisible. To kill a man merits death. To kill the peace of the Lord's Sabbath. Is that a lesser crime? Let them be sentenced to death by stoning. Barbarism? You speak to me of barbarism? You, who to my certain knowledge were one of the leaders of the ghastliest displays of barbarism in the history of the Twelve Tribes? Count yourself lucky, Dather, that you were not one of the sinners chosen for punishment after that abomination which stinks still in God's nostrils. Very well, Moses. If I was a sinner, it was because I was unenlightened. What excuse can you find? Excuse, Dada. Do we need an excuse to sustain the law? The law which sustains the life of man? It's a strange way of serving life, killing men. It was my own brother you killed, do you know that? A man who had his faults like all men. Dead because of some nonsense about the Sabbath. For it is nonsense. And all the world knows it for nonsense. All the world. All the little world of the stupid who disdain the vision. Since we speak of your brother, let me remind you that my own sister I'll not speak of it. <laughs> it comes clearer now. 
It is not the law. It is revenge. No, Dutha. Vengeance is for the Lord God in his own time. Sit down. For me, it is the law. And the enforcing of the law. Yes, by murder, if you will have it that way. Since you believe that just execution is murder. Until men cease to be ignorant. Until man begins to know that his good is the good of the commonality. And the good of the commonality is enshrined in law. You will learn, Death. You will be made to learn. Perhaps you are learning already. You, the most obdurate of all my children. Yes, yes. I am learning one thing. Remember, thou keep holy the Sabbath day. I chosen to lead them to a fair land which is none of their deserving. Why was I chosen to bring them the law, the law which they despise and spurn? Oh Lord, I speak to you from the heart as I have ever spoken. I am sick and weary of the burden of rule. What would you do if I were to renounce it now? Would you strike me down as you have struck down others? Well, perhaps I am willing to be struck down, to lie at peace in the earth. I am willing to defy you as others have. Am I not free to do so? Am I not a man like other men? Clothed in the garment of liberty of choice. And yet, I cannot forget the humility of the servant before the master. In humility I ask it. Let thy servant go. Moses. Moses, I will ride you as a horseman rides a horse. In spite of your doubts, you will bear the burden to life's end. You will lead your people to the land that is promised, since that is my will. But you yourself will never eat or drink of the fruit of that promise. I will never let you go, but I will never let you enter. Nor will any of your generation, sick with the doubt of the Lord's promise, enter that land. I have spoken. They're coming! 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 the land as you instructed us and indeed it flows with milk and honey here we took these in the valley named Eshkol Eshkol a cluster of grapes well named you see you see you foolish children 
The land is exactly as the Lord said it would be. Flowing with milk and honey, laden with all manner of fruit. And the land is ours. Yeah! The land is not ours. There are people dwelling there in walled cities. Strong people, warlike. The children of Anak. Giants. We saw them. The Hittites, Jebusites. The Amorites, the mountain people. And by the sea there are the Canaanites. They are too strong for us. We haven't the numbers, we haven't the weapons. This is nonsense. We move through the land like greyhounds. They never saw us. Look, we've been through all that land. It's a land that would swallow us, as a toad swallows a gnat. The sons of Anak are giants. Giants, do you hear me? Compared with them, we are grasshoppers. It sounds terrible. I don't like it. You've come so far to be killed. What about my wife and the children? Nobody told us we were going to have a war. Some promised land. Better the desert. Better Egypt. Listen to me, Moses. We have suffered much with hardly a murmur. We were given a promise that we would walk into this land of yours without trouble. And now you bring us into this land to fall by the sword to see our wives and children cut to pieces. I say this to you now, and I say it on behalf of all. I would to God we died in the land of Egypt. I vote that we choose a new captain, one who will lead us back to Egypt. Yes, a new captain. Yes, yes, yes a new captain. I listen vote. to me. I say this. The land we pass through is our land. No, it's not our land. Do not fear any of the people of that land. We can chew them up like bread. The Lord is with us, not with them. And do not be afraid. Fight! We won't fight. Not for anyone. Stop! No, we won't fight. We don't believe you. What I say, I say on behalf of my peers. But I do not say it lightly. Come to the point. This point, that we're at the limit of endurance of your tyranny. Moses, I speak truth, and you know it when I say... When I say you made your claim to rule through a special holiness, well, we're all holy. We're all equally of Jehovah. Why do you raise yourself above us? Why do you pretend that you're God's special favorite? An empty and filthy pretense which some of us have had the courage to explode. Your rule is over, Moses, or soon will be. We have the support of all the tribes, including the Levites. The Levites are ready. Yeah! Yeah! What precisely? does this new leadership propose? To lead the tribes back to Egypt, with the Levites carrying their banners at the head. Not into slavery, though. To make out of power a treaty with the Pharaoh. To demand that the God of the Israelites be of equal status with Horus and Ra. Be silent! Blasphemer! Worse than blasphemer, abomination! You speak of rule. My brother was a prince of Egypt. If he had wished to rule, would he have left his kingdom for this desert, his palace for a ragged tent? High priest, another pretender to the seat of power. Well, we will wrest this power away from you. This tabernacle you use for holding the people down. We can provide our own priests. Yeah! 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 Oh, Daphne, Daphne. I confess my faith. As teacher, I have taught you nothing. God will. For God chooses men. Men do not choose God. God shows us the choice he has made through signs. Where are your signs? Signs? You mean tricks. Where is your sign of authority? You murderous trickster. Show us the final trick. The bellies of the people crammed with bread. The sick and the old at peace in a land too long promised. I spit on your authority. I have warned you often in the past, Athan. I swear to you that this shall be the final warning. Seek not to rise above the Lord your God. To all of you, I say, tempt not the Lord. Yeah! Oh,
officers, officers of the Levites, prepare to move out. Tribal Reuben! Tribal Reuben, officers of the Levites, prepare to move Tribal out. Tribal Reuben! Tribal Reuben, over here! This is the tribe of Simeon. Must to move the chief of cattle. Has spoken. Thus saith the Lord. None who has seen my glory and not believed shall see the land I promised his father. Since you refuse the land over which I raised my hand that you might inhabit it, you shall not enter. You shall return to the desert. Your children, they will see the land that you have scorned. You will not. Your children, those who were newly born when we left Egypt, shall wander in the desert for 40 years and bear the burden of your lack of faith, while your bodies will be consumed in the desert. Pay hey, heed to my words. You shall know once for all that God chooses and men do not. The God of the people speaks through them that the people have chosen. What the people have chosen is wise and prudent. And we choose to return to Egypt and enjoy its peace and its fatness. Will our God say nay? <laughs> your thumb in my side. That generation that had heard the word of the Lord and scorned it, the generation of the old, one by one fell in the desert, leaving their bones for the sun to bleach. And their children carried the burden of the lack of faith of the old, wandering in the desert, missing the way to the land of the promise. Soon there were few of the doubters and those who had wavered, and these few were dying. There is no pain. The leg just feels asleep. But the fever is not asleep. The fever is very much away. Uh, it will be better when we reach the oasis. Trees, running water, fruit. Uh. Eleazar. Don't talk. Sleep. Eleazar. Yes, yes, father. Must be done. I, I must take your place. You must take over my office. Eleazar, the high priest. Your mother will be proud. Aaron, please, do not reproach me. No, no reproach. It is a task and a glory, which he and his sons and his sons' sons was performed to the end of our race. A task and a glory. Don't talk like that. It seems that we'll all be together in Canaan. Journey is not yet over, Elizeba. We still face many bitter enemies. The land promised to us by the Lord will not be granted so easily. Try to sleep now. Ah. 
I speak of him as my brother first, my very voice, my other heart. Of the house of Israel, none was braver, none more steadfast. His mouth was of gold, and the spirit of the Lord burned in him. Now he is gathered to his fathers. <laughs> May the Lord grant him rest. So be it. Oh, Lord, how long can the race last? They are dying. The old men are dying. Can the young survive? Can they carry the torch? They beyond. The tribe of Benjamin. Here, tribe of Ephraim. From Jericho up to Bethel, your new home. But this is desert. It's unfair. The lots have been drawn in the presence of Moses. Let us in. We seek justice. Women. What can women want? Let us in. It is irregular. We want to see Women Moses. should stay with their children and their pots and pans. It is highly irregular. Many things are irregular, high priest, including what we are here to speak about, if it is permitted. You are, are you not, the daughters of... Uh... Forgive me. An old man's memory of... Or lack of it. I am Mahala, and these are my sisters. Come on. We are the daughters of Zelophad, now dead. Ah, yes. Zelophad. Good man, I think. He was slain in battle, was he not? With his sons, our brothers. We are without menfolk, thanks to your holy wars. Have a care, woman. We are women without menfolk. The name of our father has disappeared from your records. What will happen with his portion of the promised land? It is clearly laid down that the son shall inherit. No sons, no inheritance. This is injustice. It is the law. This is always the answer. It is the law. It is the law. And what if the law be unjust? One does not question the law of God. I am questioning it. You are questioning it rightly. Ah. Peace, Eliezer, peace. And my response to the questioning is this. If a man die and... Who is it? It is I, Eleazar, your nephew. For a moment there, I... I mistook you for your father, Aaron. He was a good father. I would be happy to be like him. You will be. You will be. Because of him, you will bring forth generations of priests that will continue for thousands of years to come. Eleazar. Yes, my lord? Why was the promised land denied to your father and me? The Lord said, because of your sin of doubt, confess, I, I have never been able to understand the real significance of those words. Aaron, what was our real sin? Yours, I, I think I know. You love the people too much. All the people. And mine, did I love them too little? I have always loved the law more than mankind for whom it was destined. Oh, Lord. I would like to cross the river and set my feet on the land beyond the Jordan.
Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help and the sword of thy excellency. There is none like unto your God who rides upon the heavens. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. unto the utmost sea, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zor. This is the land which I swore unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it, Moses, with thine own eye, but thou shalt not go over into the land. hard and unforgiving God. Unforgiving? You but knew. I have sworn and I have made my covenant with man. I shall never again destroy him for his sin. Yet I shall torment him with dissatisfaction. For only in me shall he be satisfied. And now, Moses, your task is finished. God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. 